Okay, then we are live with SSP8. Uh, let's see what I put in my title here for today. We got Razor improving their mice. We got uh, supercar maintenance. And we have best, the best young whiskeys. Uh, not necessarily, not necessarily the best, but uh, I like some of the gimmicks. Uh, they drew me in. The stories were pretty nice. So the best sounding young whiskey, I guess. Mm. And uh, that's all SSP8. So if we take a look at our Razor Mouse, we'll start with Tech here and. The biggest reason why I pulled this up was the optical switch that they used in that keyboard for the laptop is in their mice now. Oh, the one that's in the Huntsman Pro? Uh, they might be putting it in the Huntsman Pro. I had the, the Razer Viper Ultimate has it, I know for sure. Yeah, I have the I have that keyboard. It, it uses uh, actuators, but it has lasers underneath. Yeah, to help uh, milliseconds of reaction time be faster. Yep, and now they're putting it in their mice, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The uh, let's see. Is it gonna have that? Uh, the way they have this switch set up is pretty crazy, though. I'm gonna have to get that. That's that's already done. Is it? Can we buy it today? I, 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 I you, yeah, you can buy it today. I think. Yeah, you can. It's uh, 150 dollars. I think. Wow, that's not that bad. That's about what yeah. I paid for mine. That's not, yeah, that's not a bad. Deal. It's not bad. I looked earlier. It was is nice. And the way that switch is set up, I had a Razer Naga. And this is my last mouse. And the, is it ambidextrous? It is, isn't it? I think so. That one is. And that and that's wireless. And they actually have some I have a couple of videos for their wireless technology and their uh smart technology in the mouse. But the switch that it has where mine broke down, my Razer Naga was the actual connection between the like part you, you rest your finger on that like top plate and that little purple like piece there's there was like a plastic piece that rubbed down from me clicking all the time so whenever i clicked it down it never pushed down that little nub yeah. i had to like put super glue in there and then like file it so it's just right but no, if they have good. metal on there that's good technology i'm on best buy i don't i don't see it but it's the same technology as the Huntsman Elite Razor oh, okay. Linear Optical. Lin linear optical. I'm looking at the Viper uh, Ultimate, right? There's yeah, it's on there. Amazon. You can get it on Amazon. Oh, oh, what's it called? It's the Viper. Razor Razor Viper. Viper Ultimate Hyperspeed. I just don't like how the, the the auxiliary buttons, the way that they're placed, and there's only two. two of them. Um, there it is. It is. Let it me is. pull up. If you yeah, let me pull up. I'll put I'll put oh, a couple. Oh, it's wireless and wired. Is that right? Yeah, it's both. Yeah, let me put seven yards of battery life, five onboard memory profiles. Oh yeah, the Viper like Ultimate is the wireless one. Oh yeah, and this its dock actually has RGB, which will go with the Razer Synapse software. That's good this, stuff right there. This, this basilisk. Is is the one that uh it's got a dock so when you're not playing you put it on your dock that's just oh yeah here check out that basilisk i'll put it in the the keep here also the razor viper and the razor viper and the, the base Ooh, I like that one too yeah the basilisk looks pretty nice basilisk oh that's just that's like oh you're right there there's the dock Oh yeah! Oh, it's got RGB all over it. I love it. Hmm. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, that one's got a lot of buttons. It's got yeah, a few like more. Offsets. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's wireless too. That's Eleven programmable buttons. Oh, it's got the mouse left and right. Uh, yeah. What is that? that? What's that <laughs> switch up there? The switch. 11 program, but what is that is that it, other button? There's oh. the two on the side, then there's the one towards the front underneath, like the mouse wheel. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's just another button. Probably Where are you talking about? 
put it to whatever you want. But that Razor Chroma is cool. So Razor Chroma, it's got one of the coolest things it does is just, let's say you have a Razor keyboard and Razor mouse and there's a Chroma enabled game. It'll change your keyboard and mouse according to the game. So it'll yeah. highlight the buttons that, that you need and the mouse clicks or it'll have special effects. So like if you're dying, you can your change keyboard your... will start turning red. It's cool. Yeah, you can change what the mouse functions are based on the game. Like the it already does it. Yeah, it has game profiles. So like Hitman, yeah. Hitman two, Hitman two's one. So when I boot up Hitman two, all of the hot buttons are already laid out and lit up in different colors on the keyboard. And then Ooh, when, you, when you're like cool. like when you're like that. low health, that the pad on the keyboard, it'll turn green and then yellow and then red. So you can you can like see your health out of the side of your you know, corner of your eye and stuff like that. That's really cool. Whoa. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, doesn't. <laughs> yep. Fucking mine was like reblown. I've yeah. never. <laughs> All right, what does this cost? How much is this? Hold it's, on. It's, Warm it's up any... the credit card. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, Divinity, Divinity uh, Two, uh, as the game loads, it's really your whole keyboard is the is the loading uh, bar. So it stops. You know, it's like it blacks out and then it turns red and then it loads all the way across the keyboard. But it's really cool. It is and, e cool. and each game is designed to do what you know, whatever. It's a profile, and all you have to do is just have that program, and it, when you boot up the game, it, it starts. It's really neat. I'm noticing now that my mouse wheel clicks left and right, and I never knew that. Oh, I got to go back and like change my hotkeys in Mordo. <laughs> There's yeah, a few things right. I need to add, and that's probably what those are going to be now. I can like yeah. add those. Oh, I've been I've been on the I've been on the prowl for a new mouse for a while, so. That's exciting. Oh, there it is. The Basilisk Ultimate Wireless Optical with Hyperspeed Technology. $169.99 sold out. <sighs> of course. Dave, <laughs> let me ask you a question, okay? So, I don't mess around with my DPI too much. Yeah. Okay. My DPI, I like to keep low, like 900, right? That way my sensitivity is lower. Yeah, I agree. But... With like most gaming mice, like they sell the higher DPI because you want it's uh, dots per inch. Mm -hmm. So if you have like it's sensing like twenty thousand times per inch is like essentially what they want to say you're going to be doing. But you would have to like crank the sensitivity in your game down to like point zero one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how, is is there like why? Professional gamers a lot of times play with like 600 DPI. So why are they selling tw 20,000 DPI? Well, if you have like one like like uh, Scotty's, his his can be both. So you can have it at 15,000 DPI, and then you, it, it, with when he pushes a button, it immediately slows it for aiming and stuff like that. So that's a that's a use. You could have best of both worlds. Yeah, but Switch. it just Other seems that, like there's no yeah there's no skipping though at the higher DPI. Like you're right. Relying, it's if smoother. you put it to twenty thousand and turn your yeah, it's a smoother aiming system. That's why you have it so high. Because if it's lower, your DPI is lower, and you're basing off the software. You like have like the screen skips, but, it's but faster. still, so nobody you, uses turn, twenty thousand DPI. You, have you ever considered turning up your DPI and turning down your mouse speed? My in saying? game. Yeah. So I, that's what I was I thinking. Do. Yeah, you have know, the precise, right. the precise said. Uh, uh, preciseness of the DPI, but then the smoothness um, lower of a speed. slower sensitivity. Yeah, see, yeah. I I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. but that makes sense. you know, I just never see anybody do it. <laughs> yeah, do it. So Try it I, 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 I guess I'll be now. the first one. Yeah, um, I put I a link for the uh, the Focus Plus sensor, which is basically the optical sensor on the bottom that they are also improving, yeah. and. Uh, uh, there's probably a video that yeah I have the link for the video yeah, s smart tracking the optical old sensors need to be manually calibrated each time the, the second YouTube link up there shows the uh, the video for it and there's actually a few more intricacies oh it knows the it knows the mouse pad you know what I have it knows mouse the mouse pad yeah I've got that mouse pad the one with the little symbol in the top right corner that lights up mm -hmm. and it's it's too smooth if I had a criticism of it well, this Super Razer uh, Focus Plus optical sensor can yeah. tell the difference and adjust accordingly for it. Oh, yeah. If you, Does yeah, it like, have, like, RBG lights going through the center of it, or is that just... Oh, it's, it's in the wheel. 
the sensor automatically calibrates it. Yeah, if you get to about 45 seconds into that YouTube video, that second YouTube video I have posted. Yeah. This means more I've seen it. Yeah. 20,000 DPI, 650. What's IPS? Somewhere new. Inches per second. With asymmetric cutoff, you're able yeah. to set different. Oh, I'm already there. This is like way. This is like way purchase. <laughs> about past five minutes cost this my wife. I was about to say this whole podcast is just turning into what can yeah. we sell to Dave? Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I, I'm rocking an old uh, Logitech MMO mouse. It's, oh, me too. Yeah, I don't like it because I don't. I don't know. I just. It's not. Bad. I use about six of the buttons of the twelve that I have. Yeah, the top ones, right? Yeah, I just use those top hit, six. Hit, hitting the bottom ones. Yeah, hit the bottom ones. And I stopped using them because I was just. Got tired of mapping it and Yeah. I found if you just use like the number pad and then you just change the game right. <laughs> the game like yeah. buttons, that's better. Yeah. Too many feet too many buttons. Like too uh, many. Yeah, I yeah. agree. My my son's got I think the same mouse that Scotty's got, and I tried it and it was just I didn't even know what to do with it. There's buttons everywhere. Like your hand, your hand has to be right there in that like spot. And if it's not, you're like, where is it? Oh my god. It's just but I, I don't think I could do anything less than five or six buttons, like right there no, on I my thumb. Now. I love yeah, having I'm those right there. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I could never go back. Yeah, I'm like going to assign my like right mouse wheel click to the, the shift to the right. I got to yeah. assign that to something. I wonder if it actually works. I'm curious if that's actually working. It's not changing anything. It's got me all big curious. I you know, figure, figure that out. Your right mouse click? Yeah, the right, the wheel, you can click it. Left oh, left or right. right? In the yeah. browser, can, it'll like, go back or forward. I can, I can do that too. And it is going back and forward. He's right. I, yeah. I didn't realize that either. Look at that. Nice. I don't know what it's, I don't know what the like key combination is mapped uh, to, but it's like whatever it's, Chrome thinks is back or forward. It's hard to do though, to do that. Like I'm probably, yeah, I go to do it. My mouse, my mouse like slides all sideways. Hmm. All right. Cool. Uh, so. Dave's got a new mouse, and we're on to talking about cars. <laughs> oh, jeez! And he's so, got a new truck. <laughs> yeah. that was, that was well, we're shows. we're talking about yeah. I mean, we'll get into the GTR. If you don't find that beautiful, then I don't know what. Um, yeah, there's no... Before we get to that, we got uh, Lamborghini oil change, brake pads, uh, clutch change, spark plug change, uh, because on. In episode uh, six and seven, we talked about older cars, older supercars. I think in five too. I, saw, I, I see the Fiero, the for Dave. Yeah, that's down there. We'll get we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I won't jump ahead. I won't jump ahead. I'll save that. Uh, um. So let's see. About two minutes in, he starts talking about how an oil change for Lamborghini. There's this is a, a Huracan. Which is front like wheel? This is a front wheel or a rear wheel? Or, uh, sorry, front engine or rear engine? Rear. It's All rear engine. Are rear. All of them? Except for the Urus. Yeah. Except for the Urus, so never mind, not all. Um, <laughs> there's three skid plates, like yeah, I see protective that. plates that he's got to take off, and then there's eight different oil plugs that he's got to get to. Yeah. For the Huracan. So it's yeah, not bad. Have to be, have to it's be Las Vegas. He's like driving yeah. around Las Vegas. Yeah. But you they're all accessible. Those, yeah, you can rent those like right there on the strip. They have the whole Hummer and Lambo renting space. This, uh, yeah, this isn't the most like insane mechanic work I've ever seen. So this is definitely, I would feel safe doing my own oil change if I had what? a Lamborghini. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, wow. You see how he's standing underneath a, a lift? It's because yeah. you can't crawl underneath your Lamborghini. Dude, if I, no, no. Eight, <laughs> if I can afford garage, a Lamborghini, yeah. I'm getting a lift. Yeah, yeah. And you'd have, you, <laughs> you'd be too busy counting your money. You know, you wouldn't have time to change oil. Well, I'd only have the money because I'm saving so much from not changing <laughs> or taking it but to yeah. someone to change the oil. I wonder what that costs. It's probably a lot. If I take the, if you add up the money that you save changing your own oil, and spark plugs, and like, 
um, brake pads in your Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could put that into a lift <laughs> and some uh, in a big garage. Yeah. Turn into a miser. You can buy a fucking three hundred thousand dollar <laughs> Lamborghini, and then you're like, you know what? I'm gonna do everything myself. I don't want anyone to touch it. I'm saving my pennies. Right. This is Hurricane. Jesus you get like Christ. you get like two dollars and seventy six change seventy six cents change from like going out to eat, and you give them like seventy five cents because you don't want to give them the extra penny. Uh, you're like pinching every penny, literally. Pinch them. Uh, that's pretty cool though. I I never seen the bottom of a Lamborghini. Yeah, I honestly I hadn't either. But it makes sense because it's aerodynamic. Well, yeah, no one's. I'm not laying down to like look underneath. Even if I did, I'd only see like very little. Well, my upcoming Tesla truck is actually very aerodynamic because the whole bottom is covered. Yeah. Because there's no uh, motor engine; it's all electric. So there was a, a article well. I read about that, and they were like, um, "Tesla, the Tesla truck has like the same." Like G-force down push is a uh, like some of the most exotic like hypercars because like it's fuel goes. efficiency. Yeah, the way that they yeah. built it, the fuel efficiency is like almost next to perfect. It's like just like a degree shy of perfect, which is like nuts. But it doesn't look like it is because it's a uh, geometric mess. But it's like damn near perfect. I, I don't know where that article was, but it was like they're talking about aerodynamics and it's like the amount of downforce to like horsepower uh, ex uh, exhaustion or something, it's like damn near perfect. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that Cybertruck's going to be nice. Um, we'll see. I wish, I wish they changed the, the body. Now I'm looking at the brakes on this. <laughs> you wish yeah, yeah if they the, just so the brakes the on the Lambo are easy too. They're, oh, yeah, they're really. like the same as a regular brake change. So Aventador is... Uh, oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't do that either. Why not? No, because you, you, you can think about the brakes in a Lamborghini are mission critical because you're going 120 miles an hour. You need to make yeah. sure those work. So I don't trust myself <laughs> to do a mission critical job on my car. My wheel will fall off while I'm doing 90 down the freeway. You change your own brake pads and calipers now, right? Absolutely not. No, I don't change nothing. I just go get a new car. <laughs> uh, no, I do. I'm not kidding. I've, I've had car. shit cars, so I've yeah, like always I done all that. I trade it before it breaks. That way, I never have to fix it. Yeah, but you—it has not been like that your whole life, no? No, no. I've I've taken him. I'm, I'm joking. I, t I take him in. I I have a certified like um, I'll take my Honda to the Honda place. Take my uh, oh. My Nissan to the Nissan place. Yeah. Because it, uh, you void your warranty if you do it yourself. Yeah, good. And I always negotiate. In my <laughs> I never have a warranty warranty. on my shitty cars. Yeah, I always <laughs> I negotiate. My warranties come with oil changes. I'm not gonna take my have. 2000 Toyota Sienna to the Toyota dealer to like do brakes on. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah but a Toyota Sienna isn't mission critical, though. I mean, no, that's, that's no. true. Even if your brakes are on right and you still get in a crash, you're probably. It's so easy. Yeah. Look at this thing. You look at the caliber, like the. It's the yeah, yeah that's awesome. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. The caliper is awesome. I've never so seen So, like, I, I drove around my, my daughter's uh, Chevy Spark for a year while, so while she was learning how to drive it. Um, and uh, the, uh, the brakes on that thing, they, they're like, they might they feel like like bicycle brakes. Like, they squeak. You know what I mean? Like, it was the difference between, like, my big truck with, my big truck with the disc brakes like this and a little car like that. It was it humbled me. It took me back from my first cars, you know, when you – yeah, like my old my little Toyota pickup that I drove around for twelve years that had no air conditioning and <laughs> no disc mm -hmm. brakes. So it's, it's it's funny as hell. But I didn't have third gear. I didn't need that gear. That gear no. overrated. Yeah, gear. No, yeah. Sec second to fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Who needs who needs third? Yeah. So it's, when it's do you cool. need to go like car. thirty? You know. <laughs> but it's fuel efficiency, right? The, the car, the car is not you, you. You actually think it. Uh, you think at intersections in a car like that. Like, should I go out there? Because it's going to take me a while to get out there. And if I don't get out there quick, I'm going to get hit. So you all. That's why all pe people in little cars let everybody go by because they're. Afraid. Yeah, but you'd rather have second than third. Yeah. No. And, yeah. And you'd yeah, rather have fourth yeah. than third. Yep. I didn't have third for. Like six years, I just. Uh, if you're gonna choose a gear to lose, it might as well be third. Um, see, so you would have gone. You would have gone in there and fixed it, right? You would have pulled the tranny. I would have pulled. Found... Oh, speaking of pulling the tranny, let's take a look at the uh, Lambos. So, uh, 
interesting. These brakes aren't ceramic. It doesn't. They don't look ceramic on this Lamborghini. I wonder if they are. They might not be. Mm, cutting corners. Yeah. They don't look ceramic. That's a, I know Porsche has ceramic brakes. Yeah, Porsche you can loves pay for ceramic brakes. Yeah. You could probably put insane. ceramic brakes in in that Lambo. <laughs> they're so expensive. Like you look at the, they're like eight thousand dollars for yeah. ceramic brakes. Yeah, changing like, one ceramic brake is like more than changing four. So what's the, the oh this is the Lambo Gallardo? Yeah, Lambo uh, Gallardo. This guy, this is some YouTuber. Uh, let's see. I've actually driven a Lambo Gallardo, and I don't know. It felt like a small car. Lamborghini, Fast one, but my I don't know. For uh, it, was, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Tell you the truth. Really? Yeah. Because I, I mean, it went fast enough, but just didn't. It didn't have that. Didn't, my head didn't snap back when I hit the gas. You know, it wasn't like that. It felt little and it felt light. Yeah. All right. So a minute and four seconds in, he talks about how they took out the bumper, the exhaust, and the transmission. Transmission as well. So. Quite the also, they had to drop the. Uh, they had to take out the oil. Oh yeah. Um, the oil pan and uh, the starter. Oh, I think. That's a nice one right there with the tan interior. Primary resource for anything Lamborghini. Every single. And then. So think about the the level of certification you would need to be a Lamborghini. To work on a Lamborghini. Yeah. 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 A lot. Well, that's how I was asking Trev. Like Porsche doesn't let normal people do this. No. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that can that aren't part of the Porsche like group, but Porsche is like super secretive. Like they don't, they don't, they don't let get you to film take it. pictures. Yeah, they don't let you film anything. Like they, you keep your greedy little mittens off the insides of their cars. Like, you have no business back there at yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they got two Lam two Lambos and a Jetta. That's great. They had. Uh, I bet you there's all types of different torque tensions for all this stuff, but. Like that's the there's probably really fine technical like uh, specs for like how tight everything has to be like the tension on like the torque. Um, but I mean honestly, it doesn't look so bad. You know, take off an exhaust is but nothing. Take out an oil pan, you gotta drain it, and then you take it off. That's not bad. Yeah, no, no. I have a trusted mechanic. <laughs> you would be doing, doing that for me. I have some bad news. You're right. You're absolutely right. Here on the transmission OEM clutch. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. It just pops in. It's, it's so took about, a, if you, you know, a day. If you Two own days. a Lamborghini, that's not your only car. That's like your Saturday car. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's the kind of money you have. Is That's the car you drive on Saturday. And your BMW is the one you... you put around town in yeah, yeah. And you got your weekend uh fully loaded cadillac escalade that you go grocery shopping in and then that's that's the world you're living in this is yeah that's a good point you have a lot of money you're not driving your lamborghini to work every day no well he's, this guy has forty thousand miles on this lamborghini mm. and uh nice. he had to replace the clutch yeah oh so but was... <laughs> i here let me grab a link from uh he was popping the, the, the clutch. Well, yeah, they uh, watch a lot of videos about that. And those yeah. hypercars depreciate heavily because of that. Because they're not allowed to drive them as much as you'd think. Well, they have technology in it. So it's a, it's an automatic paddle shifter. And then, so like, you can't bottom it out. It won't let you. It'll, it'll, the electronics won't let you take it to too low or too high of an RPM, which where, where it'll damage the motor. So you can sit there and paddle shift to your head falls off and, and you're not going to drop the tranny out of the bottom of that thing. Mm, no, I don't let you at all. It's pretty crazy technology that they put in there. Like you shift uh, shift blockers and stuff. Yeah. But they they, it's good, they, they, they talk about those cars, like hyper cars, and they don't, their wear and tear is nuts. Like they, they get burned up quick. And no one really, you don't really think about it, but like, like a Lamborghini's resale value, if it gets to the forty, fifty thousand dollar mark, is like way less. It depreciates to the brink of extinction. Like it's bad. Like you're not like if you get a Lamborghini was like like there's one that we had for two hundred fifty thousand miles. Like that thing's yeah, not worth. Yeah, I just lot. put that link in there. Like at all, people are like, because it doesn't. Like the, they wear out quick. They're not meant to be on the tires. 
<laughs> yeah, everything just goes to debt, like to shit. It's crazy. Oh, the Lamborghini Murcielago. Supreme yeah, 58,000 miles. Jesus Christ. Okay, so yeah, this uh, this Lamborghini has gone through uh, 14 sets of tire every year. 14 a year? Yeah, 14 sets. The Murcielago eats as many as 14 sets of tires every year. I think it's because he's doing... He's doing something. Uh, he's driving it to events, I think. What year is it? It's an older one. So 250,000 miles in, I think, five years is what this guy did. Covering 600 miles a week, commuting and traveling between every location as his daily driver. He drove it and he did all types of other stuff. 6,000 miles a week? 600 miles a week. Oh, and just 6, in his daily commutes. Is that impossible? 600 miles a week. 90 events a year. Oh, this was, uh, I think this was a track. Car, One of those yeah. track cars, yeah, that you like oh, had they, driven. They put, the they put the steering wheel on the wrong side. That's, That's the problem. Yeah, he keeps no driving in circles. He's lost. <laughs> How do I get the steering wheel on the other side of the car? I mean, I can drive <laughs> myself to the other side of the car. Yeah. Oh, you uh, can do it. Right, right after the brake change, you can just swap that over. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, this, that's... <laughs> 14 sets of tires every year, uh, $1,100 every time. Yeah, that's crazy. Brake pads on a similar frequency. Brake rotors last about 20,000 miles. Wow. Jeez, that's New crazy. set costs $1,300. So to give perspective, my Honda Accord is about to be 100000 I still haven't changed the brakes on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. This, uh, this Murcielago has been through eight. Uh, eight clutches. <laughs> it's, it's nuts, man. The demand to keep one of these cars running for any length and period of time. Yeah, if you drive it normally, power. it's just yeah. not. It's nuts. Then things get expensive. <laughs> and it's uh, snapped yep. its camshaft and ciliary drive pulley twice. <laughs> so. Oh, Four years and 115,000 to get it back on the road. Like you can, I think that's what a Gallardo costs is 115. Yeah. It's 10 miles to the gallon, it says here. Okay. Uh, including track use, the cost translates to about $162,000. Uh, crash repairs cost around 115, 84 sets of tires, or 97,000. Servicing engine rebuilds that cost an estimated 64. Insurance just costs more than nineteen thousand, and everything else, including British road tax, adds about another twenty-five. That's a total of four hundred and eighty-nine thousand pounds, or nearly six hundred and forty thousand U.S. dollars. Right. <laughs> just to own the car. Yeah, for as long as he's had it, it's cost him uh, like six times the cost of the car. Right. To keep you it can up. Buy four new Lamborghini, six new Lamborghinis. But you can do it. You can right. maintain. An old supercar. I would. I would for sure. I wouldn't drive it like they're driving it, though. I would, no. like, literally every other Sunday, maybe, like, you, go to the I, you, Is that uh, 60, what was it, 67, 69? Link, what? Uh, Lincoln still out there waiting for you? I think so. Still waiting. <laughs> uh, they're built differently, though. They're, they're, not, they're not putting 500 fucking pounds of torque and six or 400 500 horsepower to the tires like yeah over and over and over again yeah that's a leisure drive that's oh, definitely wow. a sunday driver okay um so moving from old supercars to new ones let's take a look at that gtr Ooh. oh no looks like it's got turbo boosters in the back oh, it's got two of them but they're not in the back yeah <laughs> Like you mean the lights? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna shoot flames out of the back of the those angles. I don't know. No, yeah, maybe the rear Whoa! headlights. I could. I didn't see this one. This hey, is not the one that I saw. Oh, I mean, that's some really sharp angles going on here. Yeah, I it bet is it's so angry. But it's fast though. Hmm. Ungodly fast. Dude, it has the same size engine as my truck. It looks almost like oh. a rounded out. Well, the front looks like a a little bit bigger. Oh, Three point eight liter 
by turbo v6 six yeah. ah, it's only 711 horsepower no yeah uh, that's uh that's some sassy 711 horses Does you're not gonna be able to see things? shit out of that but look at how small those <laughs> side windows are oh yeah, yeah well you just want people to see you when you're yeah in it's true accident. exactly i want bigger side windows so you talk about like the Lamborghini not yoinking your neck back. I would take a gander, or I take a guess rather, that this car zero to sixty is probably under three seconds. Yeah, probably like two, two point two, two point three. Oh yeah, that's I want, nuts. I want a car that hard. bangs my head against the headrest every time I touch the gas. Just bam, concussion. Yeah, let's do this. Only a three point eight I, liter I, turbo V six muscle turbo. cars. Yeah, see that's it. So you can get a V8 that that'll pull your head back. You know those old school chargers, mm-hmm. and those 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 throw you back, and it feels awesome. Just feel that. See, mm. I'm looking. At, I'm looking at this one, and this isn't the same car as the picture that you had before. I didn't see the one that you sent me. I don't, I've never. What you what I you got? Put it in the. Uh, put it in. I get the. What should I get? The white one. Oh, I don't like this green one. The white one? Like one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ones. Look at that. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. They're like only released in Japan, right? I, I like the front, I but I don't. Know. I'm not really. I'm not really sold on that back. I love the back. The if back no, if the back green. shot flames, I would be all about it. But right now, it's just teasing me. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the exhaust. Or sorry, the lights looking like they're supposed to be exhaust. But. Yeah. Huh. I do like it. It's so... It, it, Yeah. I like it. It looks so aerodynamic, you know? It looks so, oh, yeah. like... You could sit there all day looking at it. Like, how does it cut, you know? What does the air do? Yeah. How's, how's my, got, like... It's like a vents and stuff in that front grill that open and close to keep the airflow aerodynamics correct. Keep everything cool. Oh yeah, what is this that you're looking at? Front. Uh, 2020 Art. Nissan GTR 50th birthday. That's the one that I saw. Yeah, I don't know what the. This is from April 18th. The, the one I have is from December. Oh yeah, so, 5th. The, so the second, this first link is that that angled one. The second link is the one with the smooth angles yeah that's the traditional gtr but i don't yeah. know what that other one is i've never seen that one before that yeah. One looks nuts. yeah i think i like the the other one the the blue one here better you like the old one yeah yeah the old body that boxy body i see where they came from i really know this car very well so i see where i see where they got the head the tail lights and the yeah guys. it's iconic for yeah. the old nissan gtrs the skylines is yeah. actually what it was back then r34 yeah. oh R34. and then i see the radio and i want nothing to do with it no like, i can't do this no no sorry <laughs> like that. if it doesn't have a 14 inch touch screen in the middle i don't want it i don't care how fast it is it better be an ipad yeah exactly i was so watching an the, episode of the grand oh go ahead old one is zero to 60 and 2.9 and that's not nismo the nismo will probably do it in 2.1 or 2.2 oh here you go if you keep going down the pictures though it starts to get into that it's like the black and tan one with the a towel design oh yeah that's more like the one we were looking at huh that's a sharp one um yeah i was watching an episode of the grand tour uh, Dave. Oh. And they were talking about or they were they were trying to pull up navigation systems and they had um let's see, we, they we're had talking about my, an Austin talking about Martin. My, my, my soliloquy about how every car should have an iPad. Exactly, it. exactly. Yeah. They didn't say that, but they all had very like large issues with the navigation system because they were in Georgia in the Middle East. Yeah. And they were oh, like, they couldn't even get past, like, they were like being asked what country, and they kept saying Georgia, and it was, it never got past that point. <laughs> and, so, you know, I, like, I was using my, uh, my Apple map, whatever, and, and it, they've updated it now to the level where it tells you the speed limit on 95% of the roads you're on. Mm-hmm. So, how helpful would that be if your, your in house nav told you what the speed limit You ever look around, like, what is the speed limit? You see a cop, you're like, well, oh God, what's the speed limit, right? Mm-hmm. That's so helpful. Well, Google but does no that car. too. 
Yeah, but no car has that. No car does it. Yeah, on their. I think the Teslas do. Do they? I think that. Yeah, I think they have. You a, think they uh, use Google Maps? No, they use their own. They yeah, use their own software, and that's really? one of the caveats to Tesla. I don't think they just they don't tell anybody that, but you have to pay to get their map service to be fully functional. And it's a now, subscription fee. Yeah, now you do. Yeah. It didn't before, but now you have to. You have to pay. But it, it governs your speed. So you, it'll tell you like what you're supposed to be at and what you're going at on your screen. I'm like oh, 99% you know sure. It it. That's funny because this Nissan, it, it's, it's navigation. Its center is the same one as my truck and it sucks. It's real bad. So I can tell you that right now. Swap that out. <laughs> you're like, that needs to yep, go. You know what sucks there. about the Tesla too is you can't, uh, you can't swap that thing out. That's like vital. Yeah. Well, it's like an 18 inch screen. I think I'll, I'll, I'll probably. It's nuts. Uh, I'll probably. It's the, only thing, it's the only thing there. They don't even have a. It tells that's your cluster, I think. For everything. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. else there. You have nothing else. It's yeah, just. You can that. lay on the dash. You could just. You could put everything on the dash. Like, like uh, Scotty could have all his invoices and paperwork on the dash like he used to in his old. Yeah. Honda Civic. <laughs> <sighs> like it's a desk. Yep. That's my fucking desk. That's like yeah. the Tesla. You have yeah, one. I'll, you have two buttons that navigate that screen, and that's it. Everything oh, but else I, I, I'm opting for the seven thousand uh, dollar autopilot. So, <laughs> I could yeah, just, it gets more expensive every year. They, yep. I, didn't, I read that that it, every buy time they early. upgrade, they yeah. If you buy it early, you get oh, it forever. No. But if you don't, uh, you just keep paying more. It's like Minecraft. It like started at five dollars, and now it's fucking gonna be fifteen thousand by the time I get one. Maybe fucking charging an ass, an arm, and a leg to get some fucking self-driving autonomy right it's gorgeous though man that thing is it's so nice it's such a cool feature it'll be fleshed out hopefully in five years when they finally come out with that truck truck yeah yeah Yeah, it should be so you guys are both parents right like just yeah yeah uh what would you do if you were instead of looking at a tesla trying to go buy an audi and your kid unattended picked up a rock and carved out, you know, some artwork <laughs> on about yeah. ten Audis. After toddler draws on ten new cars with a rock. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I would definitely put them in the corner for at least five <laughs> minutes so they could think about what they had done. About about uh twenty years I'd like not talk to them. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's another it's another level. So I, when I was when I was young, I was like, oh, maybe twenty. We lived in an apartment complex, and some lady down the way let her fifteen-year-old daughter go get the mail in the apartment complex, and she got in her mm-hmm. car, pulled out, hit the gas, lost control, and took out fifteen cars. Bam, 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 bam. We watched it all. It was unbelievable. She would, she was like like pinball machine bouncing between cars. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. Took them all out, and uh, it it was insane. It was the aftermath of that because now you have like here. You got 15 people. This is a dealership. Those are 15 people that own their cars in an apartment complex where you could assume they probably didn't have a ton of money to fix those cars. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So I was living at like, an apartment and it was like two o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden I hear a boom, right? There was this bend in the road and someone must've been drunk and not paying attention. And they ran like into all the parked cars and rolled their car like bouncing off of it. It was it was wild, but yeah, I couldn't imagine. Like uh, I watched that the responsibility. The grocery store parking lot and uh yeah, they uh the guy that was getting the sting pulled on him, rammed two cars in the parking oh. lot on his way and left. Oh yeah, you told me about that. Yeah, and yeah, well the cop didn't file any reports on the two cars that got slammed, which is fucking psychotic. He to didn't? Me, it, no, I didn't <laughs> Yikes! Now you're screwed. See, uh, see, you really think about this though. It, what kind of drawings were they on the car? I mean, if they were good, right? They you're were like with kid. The kid's got talent. It's Picasso. So he's got like yeah. the Mona Lisa chiseled into the side of the Audi. Right. <laughs> I had All another kinds of shades uh, and- another. I saw another article like later in the week that had it was like, just a symbol. Like he was writing like a word. It was a Chinese symbol. I don't know what word, but. That's funny. And they said, of course, this all could have been a tremendous opportunity to sell the cars as artwork, conveying that in a society where people care too much about having the newest and shiniest things, that's me, no matter the cost or the environmental impact on the world, the children know that creativity and expression are more important than anything money can buy. Yeah. 
You know, Dave, sometimes the things you own end up owning you. Whoa. I haven't got to that point yet, but I am <laughs> desperately. That's a uh, <laughs> fight club. Yeah, I know. I love that show. He's like, and then I need the bourgeois to go with the with the coffee table and then Yeah. Yeah. Like owned everything out of the catalog. Right. And think about it, that was be that was pre Amazon. Imagine imagine him now with his disorder. Wow. And then that whole second personality thing where he's starting fight clubs. Yeah. I think, yeah, his, his impulse buying issues were secondary problems. I can't wait until, like, movie makers start making movies, like, but just in, an, in the updated times. You know what I'm saying? Like, Fight Club in 2019. Right. He's, hey, like, on other, Amazon. So, like, <laughs> do, you know fight, do you know Fight Club has subliminal messages hidden, hidden in it? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. A bunch. Yeah, because we were doing Jesus DVR. And... We were going frame by frame, and you'll go to the next frame, and boom, Brad Pitt's standing there, and the next frame, boom, he's gone. Yeah. It's... There's oh, like Lord. a bunch of scenes that he did that, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I saw it. I saw it, and I was like, did I just. And then we went through the movie, and yeah. I know it's like, it has nothing to do with Audis, but this is. Really... <laughs> All right. I something was... that also doesn't have anything to do with Audis, but uh, the Ford 250 diesel versus the Tesla Model X. What? In a tug war. Oh, I've, I've heard about this, but I haven't seen it. Now I get to watch it. All right. Let's, let's take a look. All right. I have to get through the man body wash commercial. Okay. What the heck? But yeah, this is like totally like the bullying. <laughs> uh, I think three minutes and 30 seconds it was where they started. Dude, the dude's really actually like shaving himself no. at the beginning of this video. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Skip to like eight minutes. Seven seven forty five. Oh, at least we tried. Not scientific at all. Again? Not sci- uh seven He dragged uh, him the first time. Six twenty nine, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Six twenty nine. There right. you go. Okay. Oh wow. Three. Like, dude, that that's a that, like one. turbo diesel four, four wheel drive. And turbo diesels have really low torque. Shoot. Yeah. He was That's tramping. Wrong. He was like torque tramping. <laughs> Trying to like pull out of there. The thing was like skipping. Yeah. Yeah, it's all That's crazy. Oh. Like Once you start slipping though, you lose. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's a car. Yeah, it's a suit. It's a uh, uh, um, sports wagon or whatever they want to call it. I like that car. That's the, the X. X. Yeah, yeah, they have golf wing doors. They open like up yeah. and outward. I, I really checked cool. one out in Vegas because they have their, shit, their thing there. Yeah, not... they have a a bio a biohazard mode where you can it recycles the air around you and it deletes ninety nine point nine nine percent of the pollutants. They're actually saying that like in California, the wildfires that like the Tesla uh, X's were okay. like you don't suffer any of the smoke, so you can drive basically through like the thickest of the smokiest fucking parts of the fire zones and it replenishes the air in the cabin and then produces clean air around the X. So it actually recycles the air with its HEPA filter oh. um, in its area. It's actually a really cool feature. Well, then he loses to the truck. Yeah, he loses in the second and third round. In the third round, he, he started uh, sliding and I think that messed him up. Because he punched it. He, like, yeah. long, if he hits it first, whoever hits it first, the other car can't keep its traction. Well, he punched in the. Th- if you watch the third one, I think he hit it first, but he um, he slipped, and the truck like took Three, advantage of that. Two, so I mean, it's pretty close between them. That's the Model X. I mean, that's not even the Cybertruck. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be interested well, what the weights are on each of those. Yeah, because that Cybertruck's supposed to be super heavy. Yeah. Yeah, weight to the wheels, keeping the tires on track. Oh, yeah, he did start beating him, and then it, oh, he hits that low track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, those, that car's got, like, slick tires. Yeah. Well, I guess that truck, too. The truck's not got some big, beefy, meaty. Okay. It's got street tires. Three, two, huh. one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he started slipping. He, he was, it's probably hard to, like, limit the torque on an electric car, though. Hey, I take my, I take my one out of three any day. <laughs> that thing's not even meant to tow. I was telling you about yeah. this. It's like battery yeah. degradation. Where'd they even hook it to? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, battery a, degradation. 
It might have a tow hook because it's a battery car and it's going to die <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> let's put a hook there. Battery degradation, you said? You yeah, say? they lose they lose uh, the X. There's a big problem with X's and towing. They're like supposed to get like 320 miles to a charge. And if they're towing weight, they can it can drop by like 50 to 60 percent. So they're Whoa. not really meant to tow. And that's one of the problems that they're going to that no one is talking about, per se, with the Cybertruck is is the battery going the last 500 miles on a weighted tow? Is that what they regulated it at? Mm -hmm. did, they, did they even try that? Because when you start towing, it starts to put strain on the battery significantly. Yeah. No, no one's brought that up, or no one's brought that to the surface yet, unless you know Elon Musk is working something out. Maybe it has an 800 mile range, and they've only you know they tested it to 500 with Tell. weight of 14,000 pounds, but probably not. Only time will tell. Yeah, probably not. But then again, Elon is a uh, pretty sharp guy, so I would imagine they've done something. They've had to fi figure it out in some way. They show it towing a fucking Tesla trailer, so yeah. there's got to be some thought put into it, you know? That's so. true. Hey, I mean, you got to think, he must have thought, you know, 500 mile range, but if you get 250 with a trailer, like, where are you going in, like, 250 miles? Like, why even bring a trailer? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, when I. That's the consideration for like anybody that wants to get that Jeep or that truck. Are you gonna? Are you gonna actually tow something? <laughs> I'm telling you, once you can like slam, like a couple aluminum air fuel cells in the back to extend the range by another like <laughs> 1,500 miles. <laughs> 1,500 miles. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna tow from here to Florida. Bye and be yeah. gone. Well, I mean, that's what the aluminum air fuel cell is rated for, anyways. Right. We're just gonna go 1,500 miles. Mini nuclear reactors and cars, and then they just <laughs> yeah. go perfect forever. Yeah. Just like, like Fallout, the little yeah. Fallout cars with the nuclear reactors. You blow yeah. them up, and it like cr yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah, don't get in an accident from a mushroom cloud on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least traffic will be slimmed down the next day, <laughs> right? Everybody's a lot safer. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot fewer people on the road like tomorrow yeah, at five o'clock. That's funny. Wonder what happened. Um. <clears throat> So going from like the big beefy 250 and the Model X tugging it out, we got uh, this news of this little baby Jeep. And I'm actually yeah. I'm a fan of like smaller like off-roaders. Like if they can come out with like a tiny Wrangler looking like they're supposed a to have buggy. a uh or the Ranger, the Ford Ranger is supposed to be pretty small. Or yeah. not Ranger. Uh, 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 Remember the Suzuki Bronco. Samurais? Is it Suzuki Samurai, yeah. right? Those yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh no, no, those things. Are, my brother and his buddy tricked one out, and it's a it's a Mesa beast because it's yeah. See, because the so wheels are like light. two feet from each other. That's it's exactly so dangerously you can fucking go good anywhere. Top heavy. <laughs> yeah, they're so light. They have a little four liter, four yeah four four cylinder engine in them, but they're incredibly capable. They have a low wheelbase, so they don't tip. It's it, it was it's good. They're good. They don't. They're not pretty, but yeah, they, their um, little their their little Suzuki could do things that a lot of the bigger Jeeps couldn't do. It's just a big ATV. That's all it is. Yeah, that's, that's what it ATV. is. Exactly. There you go. There you this go. uh this Jeep announcement talks about a 13 foot long vehicle, but uh so that's gonna be a foot shorter than the Renegade or the two door Wrangler. Um, the original World War Two. Willie was uh, 15 feet. Or sorry, it was uh, 11 feet long. Oh, the Willie. The Willie was 11 like, feet. <laughs> they used so to be like Jeep be Willies in, in for, uh, Horizon 2, and they were like insane. They were like just Torx machines doing like 0 to 60 in like half a second. Yeah. Doing like 250 yeah. miles an hour. I would love to have like a Volkswagen bus tricked out or... Uh, or Willie tricked out, a Beetle tricked out. I love those sh like terrible little cars that, and then you just slam like a V8 in there. <laughs> a turbo. I saw, I saw a tricked out a uh, Rav Four. It had been completely painted in Line X. Yeah. And had, like <laughs> ultra durable bumpers and real dude that, tires. That Line X thing is actually intense. Like yeah. yeah. Line X isn't. It's like. The most durable yeah. thing in the world, right? They did like I, a, 
uh, uh, Mythbusters. Stuck a little, but, uh, I thought Linexing my house. Might yeah, be. Linex your house. They did a they did a uh, Mythbusters where they like Linexed a brick wall and then blew it up and it like yeah. stayed together. You, think yeah, about it, could, you could do it. You could line extra house and then just paint it brown like every other house, and then no one would know. Hey, that's let's, really nice stucco. Let's put our car reactor inside a line X box. See I think it, safe. Our car's our new car nuclear reactor in a line X box. Here you go. Yeah, safe. I yeah. think that's what black boxes are made out of. It's line X. Hmm. Not really, but no. no. All right. Uh, so that's the that's the new little Jeep. I'm interested in and more of it so i'll keep an eye out for it um and then to finish out cars uh, we got dave's fiero. fiero ah it's like a it's like a dream come true what i think I is it. funny though is how i think this article might be written by you in a in a, in a way you know or someone Whoa. that's like you Uh oh so the guy writing this or girl i can't remember uh, Matt Brown, okay, guy writing this, has said that he's almost bought a Pontiac Fiero more times than he can remember. But the reason <laughs> he never does is that he can't figure out how to like work in another car into his driveway, into his garage. He mm. can't. It, he can't justify putting it there. That's me. Yeah, that's me. And he has, he says he has like all different cars that have all different purposes, you know, like he's got, you know, a four by four, he's got a daily driver, he's got a little sporty thing. Uh, so where does the Fiero fit in all that, you know? All right. Well, it's a collector. That's why you gotta get a bigger garage. Come on. <laughs> you too. Man, and car with loads yeah. of fucking like get a, get a, get a tough shed. Yeah, you can, you can make it happen. If you want it to happen, you can make it happen. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there with a, 69 Mustang, you know, in the backyard covered in a tarp because they don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. Know? Yeah, just park it in know. the backyard. Yeah, I don't know if an 88 Pontiac Fiero is in the same. Uh, <laughs> to you, it is. It, it could be. It's just nostalgic. I actually saw one the other day. I actually saw almost this exact one that, that's here. I saw it at the Coke place here in Albuquerque. And yeah. Fully, You're proving my point, though. Yeah. Is that like oh, no, no. you want it so bad, but it's maybe not yeah. bad enough? I'd have to ask the neighbor if I could park in front of their house too. Right. That's, can that's I put one can over there? there? Yeah, he's already parked two cars in our in the street in front of my house. I come out of places to park. How many, how many vehicles do you have at your house? Three. Just one for each driver. Oh, you got in then your garage. You have you don't park cars in. I have a camper. Yeah, I have a camper. Ah, uh, right. all right. Yeah, so that's that what it is. And then the garage. Yeah, my I my bedroom is in my garage. So there's no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. No, gonna have to gonna have to hit the neighbor up. What's as soon on? as you get another spot, what's going there? Right. Uh, Your well, sons. We're clear. Yeah. No, we got. Well, the girl will be gone by the time the sun needs to drive. So that'll mm. help. But I'm, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a tough shed and everything on the garage is gonna go in there. Yeah. And then. The garage is going to have the Fiero. Oh, I have, okay. <laughs> I have an electric commuter of some sort. If not a Fiero. No, I, I'm like this guy. I don't what think about I a, justify. What about an uh, an electric swap in the Fiero? You know, see, that's interesting. I, you, that, Would you that do that? Be, yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do it. There's much better cars now. It only oh, no. 15-year-old <laughs> me. 15-year-old me wanted this car really bad. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, let's let's talk about that Forza Battle Royale. I wonder if they have a Fiero. <laughs> Switch over to the world of gaming for this. Uh, I, would I actually have, Forza, but it's like 120 gigs. I know. I thought about downloading it. It was like you don't have enough space. I was like, oh, yeah. I guess I don't. I guess I'm not yeah. doing that. Let me, let me just talk. Let me start, Let me not talk out my ass. Let me look exactly what I what it would take to download. Forza. Uh, it was seventy or eighty. Seventy-five, yeah, seventy-four point five eight. That's not too bad. How much do you have left? I got room. It's my data cap that I'm always fighting. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I have uh, eighty gigabytes left on my hard drive. Oh, see, then you got some tough questions. You got to look in the mirror a little bit and be like, okay, what's important here? Well, I've, I started playing Insurgency Sandstorm and I really like it, but nobody—I don't play with anybody, so. 
it's just something I enjoy, uh, you know, sometimes. But I got to look in the mirror. What do I enjoy more? Like, right? it's Forza. Sacrifice. It's always going to be Forza, but. Sacrifice has to be made. I want to download Forza again because I haven't played it on my Elite Series 2. Let's do it. See what, see what that feels like. Yeah, I'll download it. It's you download it. All right. All right. I'll do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, for, see you tomorrow that... when it's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Well, you don't have the data. Uh, uh, I'll see you in January. No, no. I, I, already, I, already, I already pushed. I already pushed install. <laughs> it's already going right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta uninstall and then install. So. Yeah, uh, it sounds. Wait, the reason the reason I do that is because that I was I was looking at that link for the battle royale and mm -hmm. that sounds pretty cool. I'm it, give it a shot. So it's kind of interesting. You st everybody starts out with mm. the uh, Mini Cooper, mm -hmm. the 1965 Mini Cooper, and then apparently you, uh, once the round is underway, you'll be looking for purple smoke for a car drop to get a new car, or you'll be racing people for their pink slip, their car, or to eliminate them, whatever you want to do. Um, you can choose to keep your car and eliminate them, or... Uh, to take their car and eliminate them. And then at the end, you all have to race to a certain point, I think. And there's a circle that closes in on it. But I'm not sure how they choose the last point. Hmm. You know, do they do they take everybody and put them at a starting line? Now, let me ask you, is this already, is this live? This is live, live, yeah. Okay, okay. Because otherwise, I was going to cancel my download and wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Download again. <laughs> when the driving right area shrinks as much as it can, the remaining players participate in one final race to see who takes home whatever it is they win. Huh. So, th th all right. So, the weird thing about this is going to be, like, I might beat someone that has a better car, but it's rear wheel. <laughs> and my, I, I might not want to put myself through that. <laughs> So I'll keep so my like to, yeah, yeah, you get troll your like trolling people with real real like torque beasts that are yeah. just fucking not built for sand. Yeah. So do you uh are you gonna be able to use your custom tunes? For Probably it? not. That's why I'm Sweet. scared of like picking like a over tune yeah. like a yeah, yeah. I'm not good yeah, at driving. You're gonna be mingling with the commoners, and this is what's gonna happen to you. you know yeah, I, mean? I like, can't really drive so. rear wheel in Forza. I I've always <laughs> put in all wheel drive. Always, That's every right. car. Yeah, it's gonna make you better though. It's gonna make you stronger. It's gonna You're make you stronger. Gonna, you know? Make you great. Yeah, it's gonna go from good to great. That's how it's gonna be. It's good stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It'll it'll be interesting, and I don't think you can play together. That was the other caveat that I had. Like, I don't think you can join as a duo, you know, or or just even join the same match. Huh. It's interesting. So you gotta play it alone. But I mean, obviously, we could you know play it alone and and then play actual races yeah, together later. That's real. It's real. Car drop secured. Lancer GSR 08. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that concludes gaming. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, that was. I mean, yeah, okay. It well, me, if, it cost me. It cost me 75 gigs. <laughs> that discussion so now i'm down 160 dollars and 75 gigs so far during this uh <laughs> <laughs> most costly ssp ever so far. Yeah. <laughs> well yeah true because he only spent 100 dollars on the cyber truck yeah 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 i was trying to get him oh, to buy yeah. a fiero but ah, yeah no i'm I'll gonna have to I'll find you one yeah, i was about yeah. to Go say ahead. we'll get somebody to get you if one. you find one <laughs> mint <laughs> So bad. Thanks, why don't you I, why don't you buy your son a Fiero? Whoa! Right? That way you can Go be trip. like, oh, I got to run to the store. You know, my my car is blocked in. You mind if I take the Fiero? Yeah, no, because then I'll be fixing it every ten minutes. That's, that's no, right. you won't he, be fixing it. You'll be he, taking it to a shop. No, see, I'm get, he's getting my truck. Why don't I'm you have him fix it? There you go. Because you haven't met my son, have you? He's not fixing anything. Hey man, I I didn't like to fix shit, but I had to learn because I wasn't I didn't have the money to like go take it to a shop. Right. Yeah. No, I don't know. I I like I I honestly think that I like having professionals do it so it's done right. That's why I do it. That's why I go because I don't yeah. want to I don't want to screw it up. 
I live too far away from civilization to take a chance that yeah. I'm gonna hurt my car. Cars are very important when you live out in the middle of the hmm. There is no public transportation near me. I have no other choice. I guess I could ride a motorcycle or a bike. Yeah. Still not feasible. I could ride, ride a motorcycle. Yeah. Oh no, when I was when I was poor, I drove a every day I rode a dirt bike to work for two years. There you go. I'll tell you what, in the middle of the winter. Uh, Did you ever uh, fix that? Yeah, I had, yeah, I had to every oh, time I wrecked look at it. This guy. <laughs> every time, but no, I mean, I drove a Honda, a Honda 650 dirt bike, and then you're way up high, see so all the wind hits you, and it's mm -hmm. 15 degrees outside. And I'll tell you what, that was, that was sacrifice. That that hurt. I was like, I'm on a dirt bike. <laughs> Epic. Do you like motorcycles? I do. Uh, okay. How come you don't have one of those? You know, I, I ask myself that question a lot. I think. I uh, I might get myself. I want to do Cotty, but I don't know if. Oh know really God! Good. No, yeah, no. Start if you have you haven't even ridden them yet. Yeah, start, start with a Sportster don't, don't, or something. Yeah, don't start there. You can buy mine. No, I'm no, selling no, my. No, I'm no. selling my Honda in uh in April. I, uh, first off, I won't buy a Honda. Yeah, uh, I'll one. buy a Harley, and then if I'm gonna buy I'll anything buy that's Harley. not that, I'll buy a Ducati. No, no, his dad Jesus. was his dad was a biker. I, I, yeah, <laughs> but still. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like pure blooded Harley Davidson. Yeah, yeah. So you go. Buy, I got on a I got on a Honda, dude. My dad would come back to life and kill me. What about a Triumph? Like, fucking <laughs> right from the dude, dude, it'd be a zombie fucking apocalypse. Like, what about like a, a like the old like what if you bought an old uh motorcycle like a Triumph or something? Yeah, no, that's true. Oh, uh, probably. What not, if you no. bought an electric Harley? He's like uh, a Harley only. Is that, is that still cool? It's like Maybe this. an Indian. I might get away with oh, an Indian. Oh, an Indian. There you go. But that'd be about it. Right. It'd be yeah. the extent of that. A My Ducati? Dad had, like, the Harleys <laughs> that were loud, they would leak. Yeah. yeah. Ducatis, I, I don't even... He why a Ducati? I just and like would, them. I love the way they look. They look why would your so dad sound. not come back from the dead to, to avenge your Ducati choices? He'd right. No, he'd rock it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he'd be pissed if I was on a fucking <laughs> Ducati. I think I could sell them why I'd like Ducatis though. They're elegant and they're right. very But the Honda's the Honda's like just straight not 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 acceptable. Oh yeah, he verbally told me. Like you, you, <laughs> he, ever, he lectured me. That was uh that was the Japanese bike. Most important ever. lesson he ever oh. instilled. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. We would drive around, like you want to talk about funny, like we would drive around and he'd pick them out of this like out of the crowd. Like, look at that fucking Japanese bike over there. Fucking piece of shit. <laughs> like, he wants to be more like a Harley than it knows. What's a Ducati? Italian? Is that sounds Italian? Yeah, they're Italian. Okay. Not Japanese. Isn't like their, hand, their handlebars look like upside down? That's those ones. Yeah, they're like really, like the handlebars. They're crazy, so yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is stopping you from flying over that thing into the back Some of, of the car. Some of them have windscreens, I think. Oh, no way. That just gets in the way. That's not look cool. And you have well, to have your you have to be wearing no helmet and have your girlfriend on with you and she's wearing a helmet, but she's wearing <laughs> spandex and a really tight shirt with no sleeves. Like it doesn't matter. Just take right. the helmet off. If we correct, we're all gonna die. I'll find you the fucking Ducati that I like. I was about to say Epic SSP nine. We need uh the Harley, Ducati Honda and, uh, yeah. Honda showdown. Uh, yeah, and and then we'll bring up a Honda. <laughs> you don't even want to talk about it. We got uh, the H word. He yeah. won't. Yeah, he won't even look it up for like the sake of yeah. no. comparing. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take that on. I'll the I'll bestow the bring him the, the best. Version. Yeah, the best of Honda. The best Honda Japanese best bike. What you, you this guy loves Nissan GTRs, but he's like, <laughs> right? Oh, hey, absolutely. That is a. That's very. That's very true. Uh -huh. But in a bike form, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's my religion. BMW makes some him. some vicious bikes. No. Those Those are are the same thing. So it's a funny oh. story. BMW beat out Harley for the. At, at one time, Harley was up for bid for the uh, APD's motorcycle unit. Yeah, and BMW beat it, and my dad hated BMW bikes from that day forward. Well, you know what? Actually, you know what? Do you know what they're they are now? Is their Honda their thirteen hundreds? My dad has one of those. He has the civilian version of it, but that's what they are now. Really? Honda, yeah, they're Honda thirteen hundred uh, SVs, I think. 
But yeah, it's a nice. It's what a about nice a bike. Suzuki? It's too big. Suzuki, like a yeah, a Hayabusa. Yeah, yeah but see, those are those are the ones that are like four hundred cc's, but yeah. they just they just like launch literally like a rocket. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Hayabusa's are dangerous. It's <laughs> like yeah, bikes, dude. it's no. a lot of bike. No, no, no. I'm a cruiser. I like to cruise. I don't like. Yeah. I don't like. I like, I like Harley's because they're loud. Obnoxiously so. I ooh, like to cruise. Ooh, I like. Uh, yeah. I then I like my stuff not to leak. That's important. Harley's leak. Lots of leaking. Yeah. You get well, my neighbor leak has. My neighbor has like three of them. All leak. right. I I pulled up an article right now. I'm gonna post it. Uh, right underneath the Forza BR. We'll take a look. Fastest bikes in the world. Hey. Oh, good. This is yeah, this is fun. The Ducati. 169 miles an hour. I couldn't imagine that. You hit a rock, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, that's the 11th fastest Speed bike. Right? Yeah, you can Speed rip, a cow, rip a cow in half across <laughs> the street. Then yourself. No, you drive through it and ha like yeah, you yeah. split it in half like a knife it's through butter. Explosion of. Where did you put that bike hit? Uh, uh, underneath the four is a BR. Oh, hey, there's the BMW. Twelve. Oh, okay. I'm gonna pay paste the bike of my life here. I like this bike. Yeah, yeah, right Good underneath that. that. Thousand cc's. These are all over a thousand. That's a one liter engine. We wrap your mind right now. So think about that. The thirteen hundred Honda thirteen hundred has a one point three liter engine. That's the same size engine as a Honda Civic. Mm -hmm. Nuts. It's half the size of my engine sitting underneath your legs. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a whole. There, the the eleven hundreds uh, Blackbird. That's dope. That's a Honda. Oh yeah, number six. Kawasaki Ninjas, yes. Yamaha. You wouldn't get a Yamaha? I had a Yamaha. I grew up on a Yamaha GTE 80. <laughs> Google that. Used to drive it to school when I was 13. Yamaha GTE really? 80. Really? Uh -huh. the, nin the Ninja H2R over 250 miles an hour? That's How do you register that? Whoa, 420 you... miles Kids an hour? Kids dirt bike. <laughs> oh, the wow, the Tomahawk? Is yeah. still a that I didn't know the dom the tomahawk did four hundred and twenty miles an hour. I don't think that that's accurate. What is that? I don't think that that's a, accurate. Yeah, I think that's a lie. It has a V a uh, uh, Dodge Viper engine underneath it, and the tires they shift. There's it's four tires, so they shift when it turns. They, on, they, me... The way it turns is nuts. It's a oh, fucking piece of engineering. There's my bike. I found it. It let's, is literally. <laughs> let's see if there's a, a video of this thing. Of the tomahawk? Yeah. I forgot all about that thing. It came out a long time ago. It was so fucking dangerous. Like, who's... <laughs> we, we got a Dodge Viper engine sitting underneath you in four wheels. It turns uh, like a... Uh, it reminds me of the Bat bike from Dark Knight. That's 8.3 liters. V10, like SRT. Ugh. Uh, I look at the... Look at the image. I, I it's a two-speed transmission. Is All it right. that Bing thing? Yeah, it's got to be. Oh the wow, Bing. Use that thing. Jeez. You use Bing? Yeah. Oh my god, Dave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Microsoft Edge makes me happy. This is Dave's bike. That that is literally the exact bike. I had same color, same everything. That my first bike. Ah, it's like nostalgia. Same year. They say 420 miles an hour. That's bullshit. You can't you can't hang on to a bike at 420 miles. What's an it hour. say? 400 miles per hour. 420. That's yeah. bullshit. There's no way. I call bullshit. Like, Unless I see it. That? And I'll that's, a it. that's a 10 cylinder Dodge Viper engine. That's not yeah. even a motorcycle. That's not even a thing. It's, it's like not. They. It's never uh, really look. considered a motorcycle because it's four tires. Yeah. But they consider it one because the tires are uh, interlocked. Uh, they don't rotate individually. They, they turn as one tire, which is it's fucking pretty weird to watch. But it's a crazy bike. Like I, I, don't, I don't know. I've never even seen one in real life, let alone um, it going fucking 200, 420 miles an hour. Like <laughs> it's like as fast as a fucking like Cessna. Like you're like, I don't, I don't believe that. I believe the other bike before that doing 249, but I don't think that the Tomahawk did 400.
Yeah. That's funny. This, this you read the comments. It says the Tomahawk has never even exceeded 30 miles an hour miles per hour because no official speed measurement has been made. No one is willing to ride it fast. And the prototype is too valuable to crash. Hmm. It wasn't a motor vehicle. It is a publicity stunt. <laughs> here's uh here's the fastest well, one of the fastest bikes in the world. At least as of like twenty eleven. It's like Streamlined, he's like in a shell, like a fucking aluminum shell. Looks like he's sitting. Anyways, oh, dude, that thing's flying. Oh golly, yeah. He does 376 oh. miles per hour in that. And what? Uh, I just posted underneath the Bing link. It's uh, the top one oil attack. No, what is this? Live cockpit video from the top one. Motorcycle, I think. Oh, yeah. This thing is like built to do that. Yeah, it's built to do that, but it's it shows that it's possible to go 376. Yeah, his face yeah, is it's, only... It's 376 <laughs> inside of a shell. You're not outside exposed to the air, dude. You can't hold on. Yeah, that's it. true. You'd take, uh, it would pull you off the bike. What is that, 500 miles an hour? Is it 5, 6? What is it? Uh, it's 376 miles per hour. I don't know what that is. Kilometers, thing. maybe, or... Distance. Yeah, distance. Distance, yeah. Something. It, I think fucking, it ro it's, it's rotating it's through. His, it's his fucking heart rate is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then I still have on the other side of the screen, like, a 1978 Yamaha GT80. Yes. Just <laughs> Look at my, uh, awesome. pen, pen, Pengali. Pen, uh, yeah. Pen, uh, I pulled oh, up oh, that you're right. I, we should look at that. We, I should look at that, that motorcycle again. Ugh, I rode that thing on the dirt, in the desert. That was painful. Don't do that. Ugh, so the Pengali. So what, what is it about this bike that you love? The bike? Dude, oh. they sound nuts. They're so masculine and like rugged. It sounds like oh, a Harley, but no, it's not. That's, that's bad. I, I don't understand the need to be loud. <laughs> it's I not never... like the. You're thinking it's like that of, South like, Park episode. Pipe, like fish tails. And they make them louder. Yeah, like, it, no, it roars. It, it has a. Over a my head. Earthy engine sound to it. It's not like a crotch rocket where they're like that. Like it's high RPM wine. Oh, it doesn't yeah. have that. The it's sound really of like, excellence Whoa. is the video I just oh, came up. Yeah. Uh, only one Do you want me to post that for you? Take my take my motorcycle and make my handlebars higher and my feet wider and louder and then uh, Alright. There's no way back. The sound of excellence is that what this is? You can get it with like the Italian flag on it. <laughs> oh. oh man. I don't think I'm gonna go in the other room. It's not gonna be a pleasant place. I'm gonna stay here tonight. Okay. All, All night. Yeah. Because the 49ers yeah, yeah. are losing. So uh Epic's gonna buy a Ducati like real soon. Yeah, I'm gonna go to his house because my house isn't gonna be safe. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well stay there until the, the Christmas party tomorrow. Yeah. The party tomorrow. Yeah, I'm watching that. Oh, the, Ducati, yeah. the Ducati, the Ducati Pinigali. Yeah. yeah. The sound of excellence. I can see if we can get my knee to touch. It sounds like a plane. It sounds like a World War II like fighter plane. Twenty-eight thousand dollar motorcycle too. That's crazy. Like right? a Spitfire. Yeah, that's what that's what Hondas sound like. Yeah. No. When they're going no, fast. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds just like a Honda. No. It sounds Quiet. like an Italian-made fucking beast. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> see, that's an acceptable noise. Not the deep. I chopped my muffler in half, and now it's just the loudest, throatiest. That's my dad's deal. Like yeah. he wanted, like he like upswept fishtails, straight pipes with ape hangers yeah. and a suicide shifter. That was yeah. like my heaven from my father. Yeah, it's sad. suicide shifters. If you know anything about them, they're like behind you, so you shift behind where you have. So if you figure like an ape hanger, you're spread fucking eagle. Like one hand up here on hitting the clutch, and the other hand in the back, like smashing the shifter down. Yeah, it's yeah. so you can kick your feet out like you're on a couch. 
while you're driving down the road. Yeah. Did he have the handlebars up in the sky where like, like all the blood yeah. flow leaves your hands? <laughs> ape hangers, yeah. Ape hangers. Yeah. Is that what the, the ape hangers? Yeah. Yeah. That's the culture out here. I get it. I, I mean, it's everywhere. It's Fucking bike was like, yeah. You can hear him coming whole, like six whole miles neighborhoods away. Yeah. Six yeah. miles. <laughs> That's good. Uh, all right. So oh, my dad rolled. My dad rolled up in the Toyota Corolla. I knew he meant business. I could hear it coming down the street because <laughs> the muffler was hanging off, like <laughs> dragging, ting 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 sagging because the suspension isn't <laughs> worth itself. All right. Oh, my favorite, my favorite memory of uh, the Toyota Corolla it has nothing to do with cars, but my mom, it didn't. The starter didn't work, so every morning my mom would back out and coast down the street and pop it, pa, and then she'd drive <laughs> like Uncle Buck's car, like every time. Yeah, they I think it off. I, every for like five years, they just they were like, we we we're not getting a new starter. Why? We can just we can just coast, roll it down, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we lived on a hill. Yeah, it's funny. All right, let's take I a look at these bourbons. Done, yeah. It was it was like, Oh yeah, how you like rolling? Uh, yeah, jump start, clutch, pop and, um, starts. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. you know what a starter does? It a like starter tur it, turns the crank. It, yeah, it cranks the clutch. Yeah. That Lamborghini. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes sense. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't answer my fucking question. <laughs> oh, none of it gets it started. Because then, <laughs> then you're moving the clutch. Yeah, it's it's turning it. Yeah. And it, and it engages the pistons. It, yeah. It, it, and then it starts firing. It starts, and then you started. Because when you push in the clutch, the transmission did you, disengages from the engine. Yeah, so but you, I always assumed that the starter ignited the gasoline. And popping the clutch mm -mm. doesn't ignite any gasoline. No. I don't understand how It that just works. starts Maybe cranking now, it over. Well, fuel injection's a thing. Now, you, it's harder to do that now. And everybody has an automatic. That's why when your like, starter's dying, it, it, you, it like, doesn't crank over. Is because you need the crank to actually like yeah. start oh, the engine. Click, 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 click. It's not yeah. Once when the engine's moving, that's when it starts firing the sparks and everything. Oh, oh, that's what it is. Honda. See, Honda did the fastest motorcycle run. What is? Uh, Isn't uh, that Yamaha? Was the fastest? Yeah. If you keep if you keep watching if you keep watching that Ducati video, they go into a Honda. Chasing <laughs> 300. It does, and it's just, they're on the desert in a, in a real motorcycle. That's because it's you. YouTube knows that you like Hondas. Oh, it's San Randolph. Hudson. Epics went right into a Harley, and mine went right into a <laughs> uh, a car. Oh, that's funny, right? Uh, uh, I'll show you the Harley I want. Let me see if I can find one. Yeah, yeah. But this one's actually a motorcycle. It's not like a whatever bastardized version of what that guy was in. He's attempting to break the 199 mile an hour speed record, fastest motorcycle right. in a in a Honda. I'll pull up the Pangali and then I'll put the uh, the Harley right next. Harley to it. has an electric bike. Holy uh -oh. shit! Put I, it I, up. I told you. Oh That's no! What, I, told you, I told you that. I said, would you ride? Would you drive the electric Harley? He didn't know. I thought you that were you were, kidding. Yeah. I thought no. you were just talking shit. I thought you were I didn't kidding know it was too. Really there. No, no, it's a real thing. And then they, they delayed Dude. it because of the. I, yeah, I drive motorcycles. I know all about motorcycles. I just don't have a Harley. So you don't oh know God. anything about motorcycles. <laughs> I would buy, I would buy an electric Harley because it's not noisy. I, dude, my dad would fucking come back if I had that. I <laughs> an electric Harley. I'm looking at it now. I could feel his like scowling look. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, the fuck know, is electric, it? I'm saving oh, gas. Oh, whoa, what's I'm going on? The environment. Well, you're oh. a bitch. <laughs> like, oh, oh this is the Pengali family. Wait, which Pengali did you send? Oh yeah, there it is. The Holly, the jo the jo the jolt of Zen starts at thirty thousand. Before it's as low. So it's as low as four eighteen per month. Yeah. Oh, you Good sent the V four S. You know, there's a V four R, right? Epic. Yeah, so here, there's your Harley. Mm. Okay, let's see that Harley. I love the exhaust. The way it spits out of the bottom like that. Yeah, it's, it's so nice subtle. I would drive. Well, no, nah, I'm talking about the Ducati. Sorry, yeah. ah, that motherfucker's forty grand. <laughs> it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Oh, right. the the Harley is only twenty nine, thirty, thirty grand, as low as four eighteen per month. Epic. Look at that. You get the best oh, of both. Wow, time. look at that. Look at in forty minutes or hundred percent charge in an hour. That's actually a pretty nice looking bike. 
Oh yeah, you could uh, you could plug it in, go have some McDonald's, come back, and keep on rolling. Wait, what, what's the mileage on it? 146 miles. Oh, they have low riders. That was my dad's bike. My dad's first bike, I believe, was a low. That's rider. cool. It's got navigation built into the dash. Got all types of stuff. That's dope. All right, all right so. Thirty thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. It is right. <laughs> What's the range on that thing? You could charge it off of your cyber truck, and you could put it in the back. <laughs> I bet. I bet you could. Right? You take that with you. Oh, Jesus, one hundred and ninety thousand dollars in all EV vehicles. I'm like fucking saving the environment. Yeah, if you're gonna, yeah. if you're gonna switch over, you might as well switch over. Yeah, if you're gonna do it, do it. One hundred and five horsepower. That's it. Oh, that's a lot for a motor. <laughs> the torque on this thing? Yeah. Yeah, the torque, this... you're going to just be spinning. No, think about that. That's that's probably akin to like a 1,000cc bike. Yeah. Is there is there a vehicle of it, or a video of it driving? Is it out? Um, is this out? You can yeah. buy it, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know if you can actually. Yeah, there is one. Does it make a... Oh, there it goes. Dun, 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 dun. Dude, it sounds... Because of the electric sound, it sounds like it's out of... Uh, What's it goes that? 110 miles an hour. What's that movie with Dennis Quaid? Not Dennis Quaid. What the fuck am I thinking? Um, Blade Runner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. All electric hour. cars sound like they're out of Blade Runner. It's all quiet. So you creep up on home. Yeah, sneak home. Kids, yep. <laughs> sneak away. What's all here? Get the black one. The yellow fuse actually looks pretty cool. That's, wait, where do you see the colors? You like in the buy? Yeah. Are you buying? No, I'm just paint Down options. The bottom. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I would only, only just get. I would just get the vivid black. Honestly, why change just like the two pieces? Miles. That is so cool. That is a really nice bike. It's really expensive though. That's an incredibly expensive bike. Not it's not I mean Harleys are pretty expensive. And Ducatis. Because they're like name brand. Yeah, Harleys are fucking you parts expensive. list. You can just download the parts list. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, here we go. Oh wow. So how do you charge it? You're gonna have to have that at your house already. Already rigged up, so then you're gonna have to. That whole thing underneath that's supposed to look like an engine is like a battery. <laughs> it's supposed to look like an engine. It's just one big fucking lithium battery. It yeah, is. Huh? Yeah, Here yeah. are the uh, the optional parts for it. You got the uh, low profile seat. You can cho oh, yeah. choose to like add that. That looks real comfortable. Uh, no. Speed screen blade carbon fiber. That's the thing. Is that that little tiny two inch screen? Uh, like the thing that you're supposed to block wind. Yeah, it's two inch. Yeah, it's literally like the two inch screen. Uh, then they have the frame protectors. That. Yeah, fall of 2019. What are the charging options? Dude, you got uh, uh, hand grips. You got profile custom mirrors, satin black. You can, plug it into your you can plug it into your house. You can charge it through your house. 13 mile range per hour of charge. Transmission accent covers carbon fiber. You can add that. And a carbon fiber for the rear brake master cylinder. DC fast charge. Huh. Passenger foot pegs. And a I tail section like cowl. The Harleys. <laughs> Not bad. One. That's the, the tail section. Into the magnetic electric motor. That's yeah, pretty cool. Just trying to figure All out right, how to charge my, my new motorcycle. Yeah, out of your cyber truck. Oops. Oh yeah, yeah. You're gonna get a, a charging station probably. That's what you oh, want. Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> That's what look you at want? this guy. Look at this guy going from a Ducati to like this Harley. So totally different. I don't know how I get out. There we go. And that's that? seventeen thousand. That. <laughs> you might as well get that that 
You might as well get the other Harley. Get the get the get the electric. Yeah, I agree. No, just just chrome everywhere. Oh, and no. and look at those like saddlebags. What are you doing? I don't want the saddlebags. Oh, okay. Take... Yeah. I'm trying look to at those, find Look at that exhaust. Get that out of here. The, the metal rivets. That really sucks. Yeah. Out. Yeah, the leather like riveted up. I don't know if I have a picture of my dad's uh pan head. I bet you I can find Look how one. big that seat is. You're going to like bruise your thighs. <laughs> yeah. That, that that's comfortable like, though. I, I yeah, like that's pretty one. It's pretty big. Which no, that's not made for traveling. At you don't all. know, man. Ergonomics have come a long way. Thin. Thin but firm. Thin but firm. Oh, here we go. This is closer to what I'd be what I'd get myself into. <laughs> that's cool though. I enjoy I, I think it's cool. I bet fucking biker father would be happy with this one. His bike was uh featured in Easy Rider at one point, one of his bikes. It wasn't his bike exactly, but it was the same bike, oddly enough. Better see if I can find that one. Let's see if I can find that bike. I believe a panhead was the same bike from Easy Riders, it looks like. Maybe. I don't know. No one was a fat boy. Did you post that one yet? Yeah, I did. I don't like the saddlebags. Oh god, I can't stand saddlebags. They're so I like wide, saddlebags or the dude. three white, the three light thing. I hate that. It drives me fucking nuts. I want one light. Oh, that one looks fucking like it leaks. One light. That one, like, yeah, the red one looks like it leaks. That's guaranteed leaky. It's a 1955 Harley. I can't imagine that uh, runs well. <laughs> <laughs> Define well, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> or at all. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It could be it could be anything, yeah. really, at this point. Let's see here. Wow. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, let's do this. Let's see if I can go this easy riders. Oops. I where I'm like all um, and your your style for motorcycles is like completely left or completely right. right. <laughs> There's like absolutely uh, no in between between like these tiny Ducatis and these like massive Harleys. Not a single trying thing to find the like, Easy Riders cover with. Uh... My dad's bike he used to have it exact a spitting image of the same thing. If I can find this. Ah <laughs> Easy Riders was so fucking nuts. It's like a porn mag, but for uh, bikers. <laughs> yeah. A nudie mag, I should say. Yeah. Here's here, this is what I'd get. Let me find what I'd get real quick. Um, oh, the 1956 Harley Panhead. <laughs> I like that seat. The or lack thereof. Yeah. Like... <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> Panhead. There we go. <laughs> so is this something? See, I would get something simple because I'm not, I'm not into motorcycles, but I would ride a motorcycle. You know, there. That Indian's nice. Indians are good bikes. Cheap, like looks huh. fine to me. Huh. I don't hate that. Or or that Harley, obviously that electric well, Harley. Affordable, uh, ten ten thousand nine ninety nine. That's not a, it's not a bad price. I'd get it with the like extended, like seat, like that. There's like one picture. If you scroll down, there's that one picture of that guy, uh, where it's like, like there's no, it looks like there's no seat. He's sitting on it. 
Oh, I'd yeah. have to have the back seat anyways, but... Indians are good. The old Indians were nice. What the fuck is this? That's a good one. Oh, with the extended... You gotta get the passenger seat. Yeah, I gotta get the... the yeah. So the, so the wife can... That low-profile solo seat looks terrible anyways. It looks better with the passenger seat. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this fucking bike. Probably not. Look it up for uh for the next one. Yeah. All right, let's, let's look at these. About, let's talk, let's talk about some bourbons. Yeah, these young whiskeys. Bratatata. <laughs> like you guys. They're young, they're young but they're full of big ideas. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and they can't be labeled straight bourbon because they're not aged for the required two years minimum. Two years and 51% corn? Well, yeah, 51 is just bourbon in general. They're, so they're all, as long as they're labeled bourbon, they're 51% corn. And they're in new, they're aged in new oak casks. Although the Cleveland Underground, the first one that comes up, I actually, I bought a bottle. And it's aged with... The one that I bought is with the black cherry wood and the sugar maple wood. And I did a little research as well on it. So what they do is they pressurize. They put wood, the wood that they want to like age it with and the alcohol in there. And then they pressurize and vacuum it in and out of the wood for 24 hours. Hmm. And that's all. And then they put it in a barrel only for like, only as long as they need, like a day or less, because they need to classify it as bourbon, so they need to put it in a new oak barrel. And then they immediately take it out and bottle it. So in 24 hours, you have a whiskey with all the wood flavor. And these are, I think... The one I have is uh, 58% alcohol by volume. Mm. But I think those ones on the on this Instagram picture are like 47, 45, 46%. The one I have is uh pretty strong. And it tastes it tastes like it was pushed through wood. It tastes like it was filtered through wood for sure. <laughs> it's pushed like through wood. It, yeah, it, it almost feels like it almost feels like a um excessively like wood potency you know what i'm saying like almost sawdusty because of i feel like because of the process i'm not exactly sure if that's the reason but sawdusty no i, I know what you think because it's just uh getting the wood flavor yeah i think you're like pushing like around the pulp yeah. of the wood a little bit yeah like excessively it's not like tenderly loving the wood and then it comes out as this like bourbon baby it's like you know, it's pounding that wood. So, mm. all right. Uh, but yeah, I, I I got a bottle, and then my dad tried it, and he liked it. He got a bottle too. It's it's quite nice for for as strong as it is for sure. Then you got uh, resurgent Burby bourbon whiskey, young American. Let's see. I don't think there was anything special about this. It's except it was made in distilled and aged in Kentucky by Beam, no doubt. Right? Yeah, but then it goes into Pennsylvania for proofed and bottling, yeah. small batches, oh. high corn mash with a dose of rye. That's that sounds interesting in itself. Oh, yeah, well the the corn is gonna make it sweet, right? Yeah, and then you like give it a little spice on the end. It looks it looks a little light. Maybe a little vanilla. Right. All right, and then this Hunter and Scott bourbon, I actually thought about uh, trying to get it. The uh, idea behind this is that they have uh, three barrels. It's the, it's good for the every everyday sipper. Yeah, so they have a hundred percent wheat in one barrel, a a hundred percent rye in one barrel, and a hundred percent. Bourbon, uh, wheat, rye, and bourbon, and then they blend it all together. 
So they make a bourbon and then they have 100% yeah, wheat and 100% rye that they blend. Black tea oh. leaves, vanilla beans, rich it's tobacco. Good. Yeah, those notes sound delicious. There's your sawdust mix with a mm -hmm. clear butterscotch presence. Nice. And that sounds really that. nice. Yeah. Smooth, but with a, with a, with a spicy <laughs> finish. Bourbon is going through the like vodka renaissance that we saw. Yeah. And fla Two flavored bourbon? Yeah, well, just the, the amount of like output. I mean, they say that bourbon will surpass vodka as being the drink of choice. Uh, they, they it's think the maturation of, uh, of the population. That's why craft beers are mm -hmm. rising and Budweiser is not. And wine is bigger and uh, people are graduating from vodka to bourbon. It's the, the maturation of the drinkers. But you millennials uh, don't drink as much. So that's why all leading to the sparkling liquor category because it's less uh, ABV, mm. uh, alcohol by volume. So And, it's like, you, and you can and get like White Claw seltzers. Yeah, yeah it we're more willing exactly to spend though. Millennials yeah. will spend more money. Actually, no. The studies show the millennials would rather have more free time than more money. So, mm. ironically, I I can relate. Oh wow! Yeah. I like that. I always thought we spent more. No, I thought we were more willing to trade up. Yeah, no. We just had to, actually. We just was at a at a big thing, and the study studies were showing that millennials would rather have more free time than more money. Mm. So they're not. They're not pushing to be the head of the boardroom. They're just like, you know what? I'm good where I'm at. I'm going to sit my third, my 30% cocktail <laughs> on my day off. Millennials. Yeah, <sighs> goddamn millennials. Uh, Ruining that Hunter all. and Scott, I'll let you guys know if I get that. That'll probably be one of the next ones I get. Nice. The uh, Hudson Baby Bourbon. This is actually interesting because it's like distilled not too far away from, from where I live in New York and the uh, interesting part about this one is they use um, bass heavy sound waves hmm. in order they in order to vibrate the whiskey like into the barrels <laughs> sounds like a crock of shit it, yeah it might be a crock of shit but yeah the janitors sit there with their boots oh and they use the uh, 14 uh Three to fourteen gallon barrels, so they're much uh, smaller. Yeah, they're smaller, which means that there's more wood uh, area per like gallon of juice. You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, then they bump the bass waves. I wonder what I wonder what song they play. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Just a bass, DJ Magic Mike. Do you like bass? <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Nothing like Magic Mike. With some old like Miami bass beat. Yeah. What's what's a marzipan texture for a whiskey? I don't know. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, well, yeah. Whiskey tasting idea. notes are crazy. I have I have like uh, an article that will that we're leading up to that's right. talks I mean, about so alcohol is yeah, as I say alcohol is so subjective. Yeah. You, you could tell if someone it tastes like fucking oh fucking charcoal and and peanut butter toffee and people will be like oh i can see that and it's yeah. like hey, where the fuck do you get that from yeah, yeah hey you need to sign up for that w set you could you could uh learn all about your tasting notes <laughs> i gotta let rick know i gotta remind well him you take you take like what's real and then you like expand upon like what it tastes like and it just goes bananas well, there's a few tasting notes that are universal, you know. And yeah. That's what you're trying to. That's what you're trying to key in on. Obviously, yeah. everybody has a different palate. Some people have more nasal capability, and and that helps them taste notes even better. I mean, sommelier is gonna is gonna know exactly what they're looking for. But when but I then they oversell it, like, and it's annoying. Yeah, but but they could take. They could tell you the year it was made. Now, you know that's. Yeah. That's on another level. They could tell you the year it was made. They could tell you if there was a drought or if it was ex excessive rainfall. They can go pretty far. Yeah. You're not allowed to eat spicy foods, too, if you go like to the highest level of sommelier. Like, mm -hmm. There's like tiers, and if you're in the Mac Daddy like top tier, you're not allowed to eat certain foods, and like you can't do certain things with your mouth. Like yeah. It's crazy. They have right. to be. Your, your they... palate is shit. 
Yeah, but it's they can tell you like the soil it was in, the year it was made, the the climate or the like the rainfall seasonal stuff. Like they get like crazy deep. And they sit in rooms with each other and talk about it. It's fucking crazy. The world's Whiskey elite, right on. there. Yeah, talk about owning the like people that own the world. Job security. You're yeah. Like, What's that? You need my mouth to taste your wine. Well, you need my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I need six hundred thousand dollars. Do you have? Do you Maybe have? I won't taste your wine. You can fuck off. <laughs> you can shit whiskey. Off. Take your uh... shit whiskey and shove it. it. Tastes like shit. I made my own wine and it tastes like shit. Oh. So I can't imagine. You did? Uh, yeah, I did. I made my own. You I'm stopping grapes own. in your bathtub and caught <laughs> <laughs> Con- in Con Creek in Napa Valley because Con Creek is uh, anthology is by definition they like beat this in your head. An anthology is a creation of multiple good things, and so the anthology Con Creek varietal is a blend of Napa Cabernets mm. to make a, a red blend that's unique to every season. Or, or every vintage that they bottle it. And so you went from station to station and they had Cabernet from right. everywhere in Napa Valley and you got to taste all of these different Cabernets and then you can make your own. They had like a beaker and it had like 750 milliliters and you would pour in and taste and swash around and spit. But I didn't spit, I just drank everything. And then <laughs> when it was high hustle time, I just poured a bunch of stuff together and bottled it and that was that. Well, a year later, and it didn't taste very good. I remember you actually. <laughs> I remember that bottle. I still have the bottle. No, I still have it. It's that's why. My sink. Um, <laughs> that's what Burrell does. That uh, there's a whiskey company by this guy, and his last name is Burrell. So it looks kind of like barrel. Anyways, I saw his whiskey the other day. It's like seventy dollars a pop, and I read an article like the day before that. That talked about how he's winning all kinds of awards. And what he did was he started out buying just barrels of people's whiskeys. And he he hadn't, like, he kept getting funded, you know, because he wanted to start this business of selling the whiskey. Mm-hmm. But he has, like, 3,500 plus barrels that he goes through. You know, I'm sure him and, like, other master distillers or tasters go through and they taste and eventually find one where they're like, ah, I really like the, you know, strong chocolate notes in this one or whatever. <laughs> and they go around, they're like, what What else can we use to like, you know, accentuate that? Can we get like one that has like, you know, strong like toffee or, you know, coffee or, and they, I mean, he's winning awards and he's selling whiskey. I kind of want to try one just to see what it's like. Cause all he does is blend barrels. Yeah. That's it. That's what their whiskey is. It's just blended bourbons. It's hodgepodging. Hodgepodging. But, I mean, hey, that sounds good. Nah, if it works, it works. Yeah. Uh, the other ones in here were pretty interesting, but not uh, not quite as interesting as the, like, base wave aging or the, uh, well, the three a- separate barrel, like... Full With mixes. Grey Goose, uh, the maitre d' of Grey Goose has a sonogram in his office and it plays a certain frequency because when the yeast ferments, it lets off a noise. And if it doesn't, if it makes a, the wrong frequency, he'll kill the batch. Mm. Uh, he has it in both of his locations in France. And so if he, like, if he hears it audibly going in the wrong direction, he'll just kill the batch. He's only had to do it twice, but supposedly, to, at least to my knowledge. But he, uh, yeah, he has a sonogram that plays uh, audible tunes to his to his little ears, and if it doesn't sound right, the batch isn't being made properly, Ugh. which is kind of crazy when you think about that. Yeah, so I could see them putting bass waves in bourbon and doing something the to integrate the it with the wood. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the molecule. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that one. Let's do the spiral whiskey. Because uh, I forgot to put the name of it. Uh, Oak and Eden. Has a whiskey that they barrel. Oh, Eden. Yeah. Oh, Eden. Why can't I get this stupid ad off my? Yes. Discovery. Do you like it, Oak and Eden? There we go. Uh, Oak and Eden has uh, toasted oak, charred oak. Sixty uh, percent corn. I think it's sixty percent uh, corn, yeah, and thirty-six percent rye. 
Depends on which flavor you get, right? Because it's got the toasted oak. It's MGP. Oak. Cabernet. What? Cabernet, a Cabernet flavor. Yeah. Cabernet steeped. Steeped. Probably in cab barrels. Is that what we're doing? Well, that's weird. No, that's, that's what the wild. wood. The wood that they put in there, I think, is steeped in the wine, and then they drop the they drop the stick in. And barrel so those, it. You can buy uh, those sticks. You can actually stick, buy those yeah. sticks. Can you? I get it. So that's the whole thing. That's what's steeped in there. It's the that's what's in there. It's they put stick. the stick in there. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. And then I'll try that cab. I could go for a cab rum. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It's backwards. It's, right. Usually it's yeah. Way, it's wine yeah. and bourbon barrels, and it's a bourbon in wine barrels. Yeah. Um. But, huh. That's like Angel's Envy almost, except yeah. Angel's Envy does port. Port cherry finish barrels. Yeah, and then I have that Star Word that does uh, red blends and red wine barrels. Just any huh. red. Um, <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Just any red. Just any red. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, the <laughs> so yeah, I was I was pretty interested. Think about in the cab one. Think about the cab whiskey. Uh, yeah, the cab whiskey uh, looks nice. That rum one looks probably pretty, pretty good too. You. I did things. I did I ever tell you guys about the infinity like uh, decanters? It's, you just take any decanter and you fill it with uh, a bourbon or a whiskey, and then you decide what you want to blend with it. And you keep you just always add more whiskey. It's not always the same whiskey, you know. You add things that you think are gonna like make it taste better. You just always add more. You drink it down a bit, and then you like. Then you try a new bourbon, let's say, and then you think, oh, this will be nice in my, like, infinity. And then you, like, add it to that decanter and let that mix. And then, you know, you drink that mix for a while. That's like Scotty's a Merlot that's sitting under his sink, right? Right, yeah, he just added all those That's technically 1.5? Oh, yeah, Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, to totally derail this, I have, like, a Roca Patron that I wanted to crack open tomorrow. I'm debating You told me about that Stag's Leap. That might be wind up missing after tomorrow I'm just saying uh, well Merry Christmas you fucking thief <laughs> you sneak thief <laughs> if I just not is that how you like deal with did you buy any Christmas presents or you just invite them all over to pick something from your house right. yeah <laughs> take a bottle of alcohol get out take, take, a, bottle. take a case and leave it take looks a, <laughs> yeah bums that's funny yeah mooches uh, it looks like a <laughs> Oh, I could give you a case. You want a case of Merlot? I got enough. Oh, Red Diamond Merlot? No, I'll pass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to fucking do with that. I was thinking about giving it to the ladies that that uh, the child care service people that take care of my son. And yeah. just go and be like, well, look, I got a case for you. <laughs> I got yeah, three, so. actually. <laughs> All for you. <laughs> Enjoy. This Red house looks like a no. food bank for wine. People just yeah. lined up, like walk in, walk out with like a couple yeah. bottles. You can't even give that shit away. <laughs> but the I good know. stuff, he's like hands off. Yeah, yeah. that stuff is stashed. Oh man, I was cases using all, of stags leave caria. I was there's using a all my all my guilt trip manipulation powers on him, and he was impervious for the stags leave one five. Mm. I won that. I'm gonna yeah. stare at it for a little while, let it mature, and then I'll yeah. then I'll and do then, something. Yeah, yeah, save it, save it for one more year. January. Yeah, I was, it doesn't age. It's not not anymore. Any, no, anymore. it's like good through a certain time. I'm supposed to it's drink. A myth. Yeah, yeah, it's a myth. Well, I just meant it, like one year from now, we'll be like in a location to oh, try. Oh yeah, it. walking around Vegas with a one five of Stag's Leap on the strip, mm, drunk. Yeah, oh, yeah, I would do it. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I would do it. Oh Mine's yeah, not even drink either. David did Epic tell you he was it. thinking about uh, dipping back. Cracking them open, it's dipping back in. Fall the wagon in 2020. One and year. Oh, in 2020 2021. January. Yeah. 2021 oh, January. Vegas and just fucking lose it. Just fucking ah, like yeah. a fu- Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'll just <laughs> lose my mind. Oh, no, it's the time to fun. do it because you're with your friends who can help you and watch you and make sure Give it doesn't go south. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it cuts you off. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Give you more. What well, dude? You know Mike. Uh, Dude, Mike get Mike is pretty intense. That's why I'm thinking <laughs> about it. Like we could have a, a full on hoedown. Oh, is he gonna be there too? 
No, we're gonna get as many people as we can. Oh, that's mm-hmm. cool. Nick's gonna go. His brother Christian wants to go with his brothers nice. and his daughter, and then we'll have our family, um, your family. I'll I'll, I'll talk to I'll talk to I'll talk to our buddy KP. He's got we can get some good things set up for us. Mm. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Got to hook up. Yeah. So we can get out there. Go to a UFC fight, derailed you know? SSP. Yeah, no, no, really yeah, derailed. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, where he, were we? He can, get us into, he can get us into, like, really good clubs and that kind of thing. Reservations at any MGM Grand Hotel, things like that. Hmm. Yeah, he'll take care of us. Better wear some uh, black shoes. Epic. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so on to this molecular... Out. Yeah, he, well, gonna, sober, something's gonna fun. get kicked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I wore boots to a nightclub and they told me to leave. And I was drunk and I walked back and tried to kick the hotel door in. And they like arrested me at the at the hotel. That was pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. No, don't do that. Yeah. Okay, just keep, just by the time going. by the time I that. caught up with him, he was so pissed. Uh, <laughs> Fuck, I was destroyed me. Oh, man. Uh, don't miss that one bit. At least you remember it. That's 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 what's important. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, we were th- we were shooting bottle corks off the balcony at this club down below, and then some dude like threw yeah, a bottle. somebody threw a bottle like past our heads. Oh, Vegas, and it didn't nasty. even. <laughs> what bottle was it? Because it didn't even it's a explode. Seven it didn't explode. It didn't yeah. Even phase me, but yeah. Pink, pink, pink. It like didn't explode from like twenty. I was walking up. around Vegas with a bottle of Perrier Juliet on the strip. Perrier Julio, Juliet, Perrier Juliet, Juliet. There you go. Perrier Juliet. Perrier Juliet. I was walking around with one of those on the strip, just pa- slamming it like it was a forty. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like not giving a fuck. Like, yeah, it's crazy. blackout drug. I was on the cri- I was on the cusp of complete and utter like darkness. I was so drunk. God, that was like one Good of the times. wildest times. Yeah, <laughs> one of that them. Yeah. No, what was it? Not to, oh, it was uh it was that tea. It was a fermented tea liqueur. Mm, yeah, dude, that, that was like a hundred and fifty proof. That stuff yeah. was legit. <laughs> it was, it, was it kicked you in the mouth. Wow. What was that called? I oh, can't yeah. remember the name of that. Uh, it had a nasty proof though. It was like poisonous. Yeah. We need to find that and do a. Uh, yeah, we could talk about that. I got it. I should be able to find it, no? <laughs> Kombucha. Tang? Yeah. No. Kombucha. That's funny. It looks too oh. crazy. Hey, guys. Hey, I'm going to be need to bow out for a little bit. So. Okay. Thank you. We're just going to. Yeah, we're happy. just going to finish up then. Yeah. I just want to talk about these tasting notes. Um, well, uh, you'll be back next time then, yeah? yeah. Next week. I'll, talk, I'll, I'll be with you guys next time. So thanks. Thanks for awesome. For up. And, yes, uh, sir. Got it. I will speak to you later. Adios. All right, Epic. Let's, um, let's get this uh, molecular whiskey and these tasting notes out of the way. So the reason why I bring up the molecular whiskey is because I read one article where like the guy went uh, off with the tasting notes because he hated this molecular whiskey. Mm-hmm. And what this is is they make the liquor and then they infuse it with the molecules or they draw out from like the the raw ingredients to make the whiskey like the same you know molecular compound something like that it, it's it's a process they don't explain very well but this article says that they don't like the whiskey it doesn't it's like supposed to be whiskey but it's not even close to like what you would think is a bourbon and uh, they say there's a definite definite ethanol presence and uh too pronounced acetone with notes of green apple and clovey spice. And what else? Acetone. Yuck. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I would I ethanol I can relate to because that's like cheap liquor. Yeah. 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 You get a lot of ethanol in the get your teeth kicked in with a fucking nasty. 
a lot of young, you know, whiskeys and stuff, they have a lot of ethanol because they don't, they haven't properly, like, integrated with the other flavors from the wood and... Yeah, they haven't uh, matured. They haven't matured enough, yeah. So, so this guy, again, says it's very harsh, a raw feeling, a uh, green apple fruitiness, uh, and anise and caraway-like spice notes. So anyways, you go from that, right? And that's pretty, that's a pretty tame tasting note. But then you get into this other, uh, this Spired Matters link for ta uh, that I have. And the tasting notes on this are insane. Let's see. It was like, he just ripped it apart with like, uh, apricots and blanched almonds to start cherry uh, <laughs> bake well and pastry develop butter and creamy notes build with candied lemon meringue and a handful of jelly beans the sweets oh, continue what? into gummy fruit with flashes of clean spirit popping up in the gaps with a little bit of time sitting in the glass there's some cream cheese hairspray and grapes with darker notes of coffee hiding at the back what? Yeah, and that's just the nose. Out of his ass. And then the palate, surprisingly thick mouthful. That's what she said. Uh, vanilla cream and the Yummy. apricots from the nose in plump but dried form. Spirit runs through the middle, clean and creamy with a hint of citrus. And then, yeah, they say vodka rather than whiskey new make. Sultanas and sponge cake are joined by apple skin and a touch of aniseed. Then it finishes Ugh. cream, caramel, apples, and damp oak. And this yeah, is he, disgusting. He hated it. Final thoughts. Sucks. Yeah. Sucks. So yeah, that's, that was all I had. Alright, so what do we gotta figure out for SSP9? We gotta find... These uh, these tea these. Yeah, I'm looking for it now. I'm trying to I'm trying to dig it up. Um, I bet you I have a bottle still. I bet you. Have Did you save that stuff. Was there anything else we need to look up for next week? You f we found the bikes. We went through that for sure. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Maybe yeah, I think we covered most of our bases. Um, yeah, I think we covered most of them for this week. We'll see what <laughs> what pops up over the next week. Sounds good. All right, that's the end of SSP eight then. Yeah.